This podcast has mature language, not intended for underage viewers. Street Cred Sports. Street Cred Sports. Uh, I'm crossing over. I'm Euro stepping. Hello, this is Keenan of Street Cred Sports Training, and welcome to another episode of Time to Ball. Well, this is episode 19, and uh, I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, uh, on a side note, I'm hoping to be able to do episode 20 uh, on video. Now, I don't know what it, where it will take us. You know, maybe I'm not, I'm, I don't want to do video all the time, but, you know, maybe I'll do one every now and then. But, hey, who knows? Maybe it takes off and people want to interact and, you know, maybe I can figure that out and how to interact a little bit more live. So, uh, we'll see how it goes. So, hopefully next week it'll be uh my, my my beautiful pretty face or as they say the a face that only a mother could love <laughs> All right. uh so i hope everybody's doing well but you know uh the 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 whole catchphrase of me me saying you know how hoping people are doing bad has kind of caught on so i gotta kind of you know just throw one in there every day now obviously i don't want this to happen i'm not you know wishing it but you know people say it's kind of funny that i that i bring it up so so instead of saying i hope everybody's doing well uh i'm gonna say i hope i hope some of y'all catch uh an extreme case of uh uh, uh uncurable virus and you know <laughs> you just go a very horrible death <laughs> No, no, no. I got an actual one. Look, I saw the movie Cocaine Bear. I saw Cocaine Bear. Hey, I'm not going to tell y'all the movie, but I will tell you this. Yo, that movie's number one, the movie's good. It really is good. But importantly, it's exactly what I wanted to see, right? It, just the premise of it. There's cocaine involved that gets thrown out of a plane, lands in the hills. A bear gets a hold of it. And all hell breaks loose with the bear. Now, it actually is based on a true story. Uh, you'll have to look it up. But this movie is rated R, which means that I was going to get what I wanted, which was a lot of blood and gore because the bear was trying to get cocaine. So I'll do this. Instead of a bad strain, I hope I hope you are in a, a big old uh, pot of, of cocaine that's stuck to your body and the cocaine bear is coming from you. <laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs> no, but in real, for real, I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, you know, it's getting, it's it's not officially spring, but it's starting to warm up. So uh, people are starting to be a lot more active. Uh, okay, so I'm trying to butter y'all up because we're going to have to have one of those, what I call very uncomfortable conversations. This one's going to be uh, very uncomfortable. Uh, for, for, for me as well as for you guys. So let me start. This is the things on my mind. Okay. Um, I've been here in, uh, I've been here in the city for what over, it's in 91, uh, over 30 years, I think 21. Yeah. About the, over 30, over 30 years. And I, I love this city. And the problem is when it comes to sports, other parts of the state um, laugh at the, laugh at us. Now, how do I know that? Well, it's because I, I keep I keep in touch with people across the state more so now because of what I do with training and you know and being out there with showcasing and stuff. People send me information. Hey, you know, can you post this? We're having this event. You know, so I, I do it because I want to to get the information out there uh, for the kids of El Paso so they have opportunities. Not to say they have to do them. When I when I post something, I'm never doing it to say no. You got to go. It's just so people know. Hey, some people don't understand what a showcase is. Some people don't understand certain events that are going on, and they want to be. They they would at least like to know so they can make the decision. So this is how I kind of know people in all parts of uh, of the state. You know, in in other parts of the country as well, and the you know the state of uh, sports. Uh, particularly basketball here is is viewed really as a joke you know and I don't think I'm telling for us here locally and when I say us I'm including myself 
when us for us here locally, it's not a joke. You know, these kids do, you know, play. They they uh, most of them try to put put a lot of time in to get better. Uh, but then there are others who kids who aren't putting in the time. Now, how do you say that, Kay? How how can you say that these other kids don't put in the time? Well, here's how I can tell you they don't put in the time. Because if you put in the time, let's say starting as a, you know, eighth grader or ninth grader, and you put in the time to work to get better on certain things, like let's say you're, you're dribbling, which is important. By the time you're a senior, you're going to be able to, you should be able to dribble if you put in the time. I've seen kids on girl's side and boy's side not be able to dribble with both hands and succumb to pressure when being trapped and make Obvious bad passes that lead to, you know, turnovers. So, no, you can't tell me that a lot of these kids are putting in the time. Now, how do we fix it? I'll get to that, uh, if not today, another day, because it's a deep discussion. But where am I going with all of this? Well, there's a new nickname. I kind of even thought of it because it, I, I was really upset with it. And, and, and instead of calling this us El Paso, Texas, I came up with the name El Participation, Texas. Well, what does that mean? Why would you call us El, pa- El Participation, Texas? Okay, so I was uh, looking at uh, different feeds on Twitter. Uh, and the funny thing is that, that there are some, you know, who some companies here locally that are sports reporting they 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 say that they sport they report sports they're good at some things but you know like when you're trying to get scores and stuff because if i'm training i'm not able to 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 listen to scores so i like to try to scroll through twitter or instagram or facebook and kind of find out what the score is and the only person that does that is the the person for the el paso times felix chavez right okay so I was looking at something and it was talking about, you know, certain teams that they had lost their by district, their second by district uh, uh, game. I think it was the second by district game. It was OK. It was the first by district game they play here locally. Then the second one they play against the team, you know, kind of going into the area. So uh, the, the game, you know, they lost a lot of the local teams lost. And then I was looking at something like, I don't even know why it came about, but I was looking at a team and I was like, I wonder, you know, what they finished because they got beat pretty bad. So I couldn't find anything as far as the um, actual uh, rankings, not rankings, the the, uh, the standings. So I had to go to max prep. So I go to max prep. And, you know, do my search. I, I have an account. I do a search, you know, and go to district. And I know that here, and I think in, I'm assuming in other districts in the state of Texas, they take the top four, they take the top four teams in, in, the, uh, in, the, in that particular district. So, you know, if you had a district where you got nine teams, only four of them going to go, five won't go. Well, this particular district had five teams. Right. So only one was going to technically not go. Well, apparently this one team uh, didn't didn't feel the program to play play uh, basketball this year. So now you only are left with four teams. So now, no matter what happens, you're going to make the playoffs. Right. No matter how bad your 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 record is, if you're in last place in district, you're going to make the playoffs. Well, this particular team, um, Irvin, on the boys' side, Irvin High School, this team didn't win a single district game. I think, in fact, they were five and uh, twenty-five and twenty-six, and I can look it up because I, I have the information here. But they, they, they were not good in district. They were not good in district at all. So they were five and twenty. In, in overall in 0 and 9 in district. But they go to the playoffs. Now, from a community standpoint, hey, we get to go to the playoffs. But like, look, you know, I've been asked, like, well, would you would you send your team? Me personally, I would say no. We don't deserve we didn't win a single district game. You don't deserve to go to the playoffs. 
you know, hey, you know what? Y'all just go ahead and put a scratch by us and uh, advance that other team. We're, we're not gonna. We're not going. Even if the other team that we were playing was part of that five wins that we had, maybe we can win. But you didn't win a district game, right? So, in my opinion, some that right there, that needs to be tweaked. If you got a district with four teams, why are we playing games? Let's just get to the playoffs. Of course, I, I know why you play because you got to go to seeding. So I, I'm not. I'm being kind of facetious. Oh, 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 SAT word. All right. So I'm. You know, I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm joking when I say it, that. Uh, why even play? Because yeah, you obviously have to know who your seeding is. Who's going to be the one seed, two seed, three, and four? But you don't win a single game. How does that work? Imagine. In sports, in in in, uh, in in professional sports, a team doesn't win a single game in their division or in their conference, and they still get to make the playoffs. Now it's happened because when you look it up, I think the Bulls, uh, Jordan's year when he was the the year that they he dropped sixty three on the Celtics, I believe they were like thirty six and fifty two or something like that. They made the playoffs, which which is terrible. But I get it. It's money involved. You know, you're going to make money and stuff. I, I, I'm not I'm not feeling it. If you're not having a winning record, then, no, nah, man, I don't, we weren't good enough. You know, no matter what y'all are saying. Right. So I think that needs to be fixed. And to me, it, it wasn't just this team. Now, the second thing, reason why I decided to call us L, L participation, I decided to call us. You hear that? I'm not saying y'all. I'm saying us because I'm in this with y'all. I'm in this with it. We're in this together. L participation, Texas, is in another district on the girls' side. You know, at the end of the year, they uh, they put out, uh, you know, newcomer of the year, defensive player of the year, conference player uh, I mean uh, MVP of, of the year for for that district you know coach uh, of the district coach of the year for that district well this particular coach um was 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 a uh, coach of the coach of the year for for this district wow I'm like okay that's cool now when I first saw it I was like oh man they must have did really well because I I haven't I, honestly I hadn't had a chance to watch a lot of games okay so I don't want y'all to think I'm like oh well I'm watching all of now I watch film but I hadn't had a lot watch a lot of games because I've you know with with the business it's 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 busy right so um so I'm, I'm like oh well let me see you know because I, I don't remember seeing them in district you know that they made the playoffs but I, I thought I knew which game teams it was but I wasn't sure because there, there was a lot of redistricting uh some teams that were 5A moved to 4As I think a couple that were uh, uh 6A or 5A went up or something so some districts have I think 6A has like nine teams in one district you know and in 5As the most you have is maybe five or six so it was a lot of movement but in any case I was like okay maybe I missed something well, I go to look up the uh, record for this for this particular team and its coach. So their record, their overall record, was one in twenty seven. One in twenty seven. They won one game this year. Their district record was zero in fifteen. Okay, and the coach uh, Castaneda, I think it's Noel or Joel Castaneda. Let me. I got the information here. I'm trying to make sure. That I don't, you know, I don't want nobody to think I'm just, you know, saying somebody's name bad. But uh, Noel Castaneda was the coach of the year from Irvin. My question is, how can you justify a coach being coach of the year with one win? Right. I'm not being disrespectful. I'm really asking, how does that happen? How do you have a coach? that didn't win a district game. Now, through talking to some to 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 some different people, uh the word on the street was, you know, the person had a really hard time, you know, had really, you know, there's a lot of intangibles going on. So then my my suggestion would be uh, you know, why not create another award to give that person 
for, you know, their efforts and stuff like that. Maybe, you know, something to let that person know, hey, we see what's going on, you know, and I'm not there. I'm not there. But oh, but oh, and 15, one and 27, I don't have to be there to see that record. So a person gets the coach of the year and they won one game. How does that resonate throughout the state, throughout the country? How can how how can somebody turn around and say and take something serious like that? Now, I'm going to go deeper with this particular coach. Because I've had kids uh, within that program and, you know, those parents uh, had to stop training because they were told they, they couldn't train or do anything during the season. If they did, they would be you know, kicked off the team. Now, here's what I say about that. As a parent, nobody's, I'm sorry, mama. Nobody's ever going to fucking tell me what I can and can't do with my child outside of, of that practice. If it conflicts with practice or if it conflicts with a game, no, I'm not taking them, but I'm going to work around to help my child to be a better basketball player. I'm going to even go deeper. This particular player that I had was 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 having issues. They were the best player. They were having issues because this coach, you know, wanted them to continue to run the play. Even though when you watch the game, it, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't particularly working. Some of the other uh, teammates weren't strong in, in, in their form of fashion. Right. So I, you know, talk with the player and say, look, you know, this is what you should do. This this will help both situations and then give you a better look after you know, showing them, going through it, it was working splendidly. Now, did I go around trying to tell everybody? Well, I'm, I'm saying it now because I, I want to make sure that there's some context uh, with the coach. I don't know the person. I, I think it's really, I don't, I don't have any ill will towards the coach either. I just think it's really messed up that you would not allow somebody to try to get their kids better to help your program. That that blows my mind away. Now, if I was doing something that was hurting what they're doing, absolutely, I get that. I would never do that. My my program is built to try to help kids to be better on their teams. And we have been successful at it for over 10 years, for over 10 years. So we can scratch that shit about, nah, you're not doing this. For, so for all of y'all coaches out there that don't know, yo, we do what we do very well. Okay. Now back to this. So the parent says, you know, I, I we can't bring them and everything. And, and I respect that. I, I didn't, I would never, I didn't want to say, well, we need to go talk to this coach and you need to just do this. I said, look, I respect what you're saying and I get the position you're in. And I think it's best, you know, that, that you follow what you feel. And they regrettably had to stop training. Right. And, and I was okay with it. I didn't like it. Not I didn't like it because that 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 actual concept or, or putting that parent in that position was wrong. OK, so if the word is, well, this coach, which is what is floated around, this coach has had a hard time with uh, things because this coach is, uh, you know, dealing with some issues, not having players that, you know, that can really help the program. Fuck that. Because you had it. You had organizations like myself trying to work with your kids. You had, you know, different uh, 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 programs in place. You could reach out. I've reached out. I, look, I'm going to tell you all right this. And I still keep one of these letters. I sent the letter to every single district in the, in, in the city. Every single school, rather. Every school in every district. It was 24, 25 letters. I sent one and I called most of the ones that I know for a fact just to make sure they got them. Yeah, they got them. Now, did all of them send me players? No, but I did it. And it was a very professional letter. Me introducing what I do, introducing the program, letting them know I'm here to help, you know, whatever I could do and stuff like that. So I know I know I know they got them. I know all of these coaches got them. Some of them I hand delivered. So I know they got them. So if you if you had this kind of stuff 
uh, in your disposal. And, and if you're, you know, smart enough to put down in, in, in a letter to students that they can't do any type of training, you know, organizations are out there. So I don't want to hear about the, the woe is me. My kids aren't that good. I'm doing the best I can. I'll take this. I'll take this award because my program is struggling. No, you had a chance to get it. So if you didn't want to deal with those programs that can help your kids get better so you would have more than one win and more than zero wins in district, how can you accept that? How can you accept a a, a trophy or, or an award? So, yeah, when you when it comes across like that and it's because I have inside knowledge, this is one of those times where I can kind of speak and, and not say sources told me this. Now, I'm not going to say who the parent and the child was. They're not playing there anymore. They've been gone for a while. But I'm not going to say that. But I can say the coach's name, which is Coach Castaneda, who won district. He won the district of Coach of the Year award. So, yeah, you, you need to you, – that needs to be addressed. Right. And, and and like Tupac says, I'm not I'm not hard to find if somebody really feels, you know, like I was being hard or I was being unfair and that was messed up. You know, reach out to me because I, I, I there's a lot more I can say on it, but I'm not going to. But I just think you can't put that kind of stuff out there where we're allowing people who who didn't win, you know, to get rewarded for that. And we're teaching our kids that it's not about always getting a trophy in some instances when you're developing. Yeah, of course you're going to get trophies, right? It's participation. Like the Y or some developmental leagues where every kid gets a medal and stuff and it's feel good. But in really competitive sports, if you don't make it, you don't get it. You don't get an award. You don't make the playoffs. There are a ton of teams that didn't make the playoffs, uh, because they were in a district where they, they didn't make the top four. There are a ton of coaches that probably coached their butt off, but, you know, didn't have the right formula this year. They're, they didn't get coach of the year. So why should somebody who didn't? All right, enough of that. Let me move on to my second, info, uh, second topic for uh, things on my mind. This has been a long time coming. I'm not going to go scorched dirt. I'm not going to do the whole I told you, so I'm just I'm just going to kind of lay it out there. Uh, OK, there, there are some, you know, going to be some uh, programs changing coaches. There's going to be some coaches who, um, who who are either resigning or moving on for other reasons and some that are getting uh, moved out because they haven't performed. The one particular program I'm going to uh, key on is uh, El Dorado. El Dorado here. Uh, it's really a good, good it, it's in a good position program wise because they have a ton of talent. So why is it that though that talent isn't, you know, seen? Well, uh, a lot of those kids wouldn't play uh, for the coach who, who was just let go, Coach uh, Lopez. They wouldn't play. They they were going to other schools. Oh, Keenan, how you know that, man? You just talking? No, I know because I know kids that, that that for years that have been in that program that went to a different school because they weren't feeling the coach. Now, me, I always try to look in the coach's mind and think, well, you know, maybe he's you know a little bit tougher. Maybe he's a disciplinarian. You know, maybe he wants the best out of out of those kids, and. Having to kind of find out stuff, <laughs> it, it really wasn't that. And then finding out how, and, and look, I found out later on how how bad the this 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 coach thought of what we do, which which was odd because I had never met him. And and here's what I'll say: if you come through our doors as a coach, as a parent, or whatever, and you sit down and you watch a, a, a training. And then you get up and you say, man, these guys don't know what the hell they're doing. I'll at least respect that. I, I'll probably call bull, but I, I would respect that enough to say, OK, you know, at least you came and you saw it. How can we get better? What was it we weren't doing? Because sometimes you come in and you see one thing and you're thinking something without understanding the bigger picture of how we put stuff together. Right. 
But in, in any any case, okay, I, I get that, right? Well, uh, I had a, a I have a showcase that I do, and I had been doing it, and I had parents that signed up and was looking to sign up, and the parents' words to me after they signed up was. Hey, uh, we're not going to be able to do the showcase because our coach told us if we do the showcase, we will not be allowed to play on this in, in uh, uh, on the on the team this year. And I thought it was, oh, are you sure? Is it conflicting with something? That's what I what my thought was. You know, maybe it's conflicting with something. Then I had a second parent from the school call me. I want to say about an hour or two later, same thing. And then I'm thinking, well why i was like are you guys playing i was like no they just coach says it we can't we can't do it again here i am in my parental voice you're not telling me what i can if and now if it's conflicting then yeah no you're going to be part of that program but if there is no conflict you're not telling me what i can and can't do with that child okay so go a step further some of some of the best kids in that program are kids that we train and you know how bad it had to be because I, I got to a point to where I would tell parents when I found out that they were going to that school, I had to tell them, I don't think you should come here. I don't think we can train you because the coach really looks down on our program and I would never want that to uh, affect your child. But the parents saw how much better their kids got after one training. So then I had to tell the parents, okay, all right, well, just don't mention that you come here, <laughs> you know, don't wear any gear. Don't tell them. So it was a long standing joke for years that kids that we had that were that were his top players, not every single player. I'm not saying every single, but I can I can name them some of the top players in this program that were doing really good. Some were really good role players, right? You know, doing their role really good. But we had other ones that were top players. They were the, they were those dudes on the team. It was a long-standing joke that a lot of those kids didn't know that the other ones were coming here because they were sworn to secrecy because they didn't. I didn't want them getting punished. If I went to the game, I, I obviously when I go, I don't cheer. Because I'm just there to watch it to see, you know, see what's going on, see if the kids are doing different things. Obviously, I, I, I'm, I'm in uniform, but I try to make sure I'm not because I wouldn't want that coach to see me and make any kind of correlation of that player and take it out on the player. I wouldn't want that because this coach had already told parents if they were in our program, if they went to our showcase, that they couldn't play uh, for the team. Which is crazy because all we were doing is uh, getting an opportunity to have actual college coaches and scouting services to, to view these kids to help their program. So if they have a top level kid and a coach, a college coach likes it, that coach is going to go watch that that kid play. And if the kid can continue to play, then it's more eyes on the other kids as well. But that was not what was said. Hell, one of my players told me that the coach went as far as to tell him, yo, why are you spending $40 over there when I can train you for free? So saying that means that you know how much we, we charge. Then you turn around and, and tell him that. And then the kid says, I didn't have the heart to tell him, coach, that everything that he could show us is stuff you showed us back in sixth and seventh grade. Right? So I hate that this man lost his job. I'll never be one to say you need to. Well, I, I, it could be it could be a line that somebody crosses where I might be like, yo, you need to lose your job, you know, but I don't take any joy in it. I just don't understand how that person, uh, how, how this coach, you know, came to, to view our program with, with such vitriol without even knowing me. I didn't even know who this coach was. I couldn't and, until finally I, I was at a game and I happened to see him. I'd never seen this man before. I was thinking, damn, maybe maybe I crossed him up and stuff for before. Because I've had that happen. Well, I did somebody dirty on the court before. And when I say dirty, it was, you know, I made a move and I made them fall or something and they got embarrassed. And, you know, later on in life, they still holding on to it. So, you know, they they don't want to do nothing with me or, or, or anything because of that. And, you know, I, OK, that's fair, I guess. It's kind of petty, but I get it. But that's what I was thinking. But I've never seen this this man before. 
and to take such a hard position. And he's not the only one. I'm only speaking about him today is because he's no longer there. Now, reach out to him. You know, I, I would advise he doesn't need to, to to reach out to me to try to talk because, you know, when I say I'm talking five to six years, maybe even longer. Se- no, seven years. It's been it's been about seven years ongoing with this. I have nothing to say. There is no reconciliation or anything. You know, I sent you a letter. You know, you guys know where I'm at. You could have reached out to me and told me what problems you had and how I can help you. But almost every other single coach in here I communicate with. When I when I get a kid from that program, I ask them, hey, what is it that you need me to, to try to help this person, this kid with focus on? That's that's what I'm trying to do. So, you know, for, for that to go on as long as it did. It was sad and it was sad for the kids because I couldn't I couldn't allow them to be celebratory in in what they were doing because I didn't want it to be known what they were doing, which which was crazy. And maybe I'm at fault. You know, if you feel I'm at fault in some way, uh, let me know. I can't see it. I've looked at it 12 different ways to try to understand. Maybe I did something, but no. So that person is no longer there. And that program is a very coveted program now. Whoever gets that program, I think it's going to be a seismic shift in that district, especially if that coach is able to, uh, you know, relate to the kids and and give the kids uh, something uh, to, you know, put in a system in place where kids can play. Because one of the biggest things and, and, and El Dorado at the time wasn't the only isn't the only high school that does this. They have this system where some of these some of these coaches had a system where uh, only so only certain players are allowed to to shoot. You'll have some kids that are right there, get the ball. Nobody's playing them, but they can't shoot. They got to pass it. It's not basketball, y'all. That's not basketball. And in scouting it and hearing uh, some of the games that were played this year, that team was scouted and was completely taken out of what they wanted to do. And players who had IQ enough to understand what they could do wasn't able to do it. Wasn't able to do it because if they did, even if it was successful, they were going to be taken out, out of game. For for making a basketball play. Not for hot dogging, but for understanding, hey, he keeps overplaying his pass. When I catch it, instead of swinging it, I have a one dribble to the basket layup. Now I guarantee you, if you do that, the next time that player is not going, that defensive player is not going to be too quick to move with that swing out of fear of of you taking that that one dribble to the basket and it opens up that swing pass. That's really how basketball goes, as far as I know, and I've seen it on all different levels. You you keep the defense honest sometimes by doing something that they're not expecting, right? If the kid, if those teams know you love to run up and go back door. And they're playing it to keep you from doing it. You do something different. Now it's on their mind about what you did. It cost them. Now they're going to play it the way you want them to play it so you can run your offense. But I'm hoping for the best. Now, I, I, when I say this, I don't mean, I don't want y'all to think I'm being, uh, you know, what is the word? I, I don't want y'all to think I'm I'm being funny. You know, I, I don't mean it. I, I wish I wish him the best. Hopefully, you know, he can reflect on what he did right, what he did wrong, come back with a new game plan. And, and you know, and, and not even re- in regards to working with us. I'm not even saying us because him not. We did our part. Our kids were winning games and they were really good and successful. So I did my part with what I was doing under the circumstances with what we had to work with as far as what those kids were allowed to do. Even this year had a kid who was doing his thing because of, you know, different things that I was, he was being shown. So we did our part. Those kids were six. The kids we had were successful there. Right. So wherever he goes next, hopefully he looks at some things and makes some tweaks. I'm not even saying he needs to come to us to try to help that, that boat is passed. There are some, some things in his life is like, look, man, you know, you felt that you felt so strongly about that, about us when it came to that. Yeah. Now I don't, I mean, I don't think that there's really any reason for us to try to start a relationship or, or try to be cool, you know, because it, it 
it, it, it was it's it was really bad it was really bad really bad so but again i hope i hope the best for him and if he gets another program he looks at some of the things he did right looks at some of the things he did wrong and maybe he's a little bit more open because i think what from what i've seen some coaches here have such an old school mentality with how they coach not saying you have to be a certain you have to have a new school mentality but you got to understand a lot of these kids now for the most part know how to play basketball so let them play run your offense but let them play you know see if they're being you know you're i guess i guess i should i guess it's like i'm saying that from the outside looking in but i've seen kids that could play not even be given the opportunity to play because of the way the style of, uh, of the of the uh, uh systems that they run but Okay, I've talked a lot about that. I've got it off my chest, all right? But I'm sure there's going to be some people uh, hitting me up saying, man, that was messed up. You know, you should be, uh, you know, look, I'm going to stand on it. I'm not going to apologize for it because if I'm apologizing for, not not the, the, the Coach Lopez, but the participation thing, if I'm apologizing it, y'all should actually be asking yourself, why is it that that program is, is where it is? Why, why hadn't that program gotten better? to not win a, a, a single district game, right? So, yeah, no, nah, that's not on me. That's not on me. So, okay, let me get into my basketball training ideology. All right. Well, one thing I will tell y'all, and that's from watching uh, and, and, you know, being a part of the game and stuff in my own way, you cannot be timid in sports, Timid players in sports doesn't work. Well, what do you mean timid? You mean like they don't like to go up and say hi? They're, they're nervous around people? No, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is kids or players. I'll just say players because it's not just – it's mainly on the lower levels, but you can see it sometimes in in, in college and professional. But players who who are afraid – to make mistakes or afraid to make a, de- a decisive decision because of consequences. Now, the thing that I've noticed, I've narrowed it down to three reasons that kids, and, and I'm speaking to the kids that, you know, that have come through our doors. The three reason kids don't are, are nervous and scared. And there's actually like a, a fourth reason, but the first reason, and it's not in any order. Some are afraid to get their shot blocked. Okay. Or they're afraid to get filed in that in that same same uh, listing. Another reason is they're afraid to actually miss the shot because if they miss, then you know they they don't uh, they're afraid about they don't want to fail. Okay, I'll put it like that. They don't want to fail, so they don't want to take shots that they're worried that they're going to miss. Uh, third reason is they're they're afraid that they're going to be yelled at and taken out of the game by the coach. OK, so some kids would rather pass the ball than to actually try to make a decision with trying to shoot. If they figure if I pass it, as long as I pass to that person, I've passed off the responsibility of making a mistake. I can stay in the game right now. There are pros and cons to that. I can get into that another day. Now, the fourth one uh, is, you know, you could say 1A, 2A, 3A. I'll just say I'll I'll add another one uh is they don't know what to do when they catch the ball meaning they don't have a a concept of the offense what they're supposed to be doing how they're supposed to be doing it and uh the decisions and options that that they're that they they have for them so this makes players timid okay now there are other forms In, in big game situations some players not every player wants to take the last shot in the game Right. Some players don't have that mentality. Others do. Right. And and that's why you want them in those big moments. I'm not really talking about that. I'm talking about players that are that are scared to perform because they're scared. Right. They're they're timid. And you see it. The easiest way to see it sometimes is when a player and I'm going to speak on basketball side, when a player catches the ball and immediately they're like shaking the ball like like they're like. They're shaking the ball because they don't know what to do. 
that's usually a first sign that a player is 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 out of his or her element and they don't know what to do and it could be one of those reasons these are the the main reasons the thousands of kids that we've had come in our door for all of these years you know they they fall in those categories okay so um when i address it what i do is i just try to show them how give them the options showing them what they should what they the different things they can do when they catch the ball and by giving kids a lot more understanding of what they should that what they could do it gives them you know options i'd say at least 90 percent of the kids actually do it right and they make the mistakes and what i tell them is i don't care if you missed it. i don't care if you miss the shot or if you mess up but you need to see that it's, you know, that this is something that you can do. And most of the time it's very successful. There are sometimes, obviously it's nothing a hundred percent. There are times where, you know, some players won't do it. They just are so in their head. Some players don't execute it. And then we have to find another way to help them, you know, get better and be able to help the team. So uh, being timid in sports does not work. I don't think it's ever worked in the history of sports. I mean, somebody have to send me a line and say, yo, this player was timid. He was scared to kick the field goal, but some kind of way he kicked the ball, it hit somebody's helmet and it went, it went in the goal and they won, you know, or this player was scared to kick the soccer ball for a goal and he accidentally fell and tripped and hit it with his knee and it hit the, the referee in the face and ricocheted and went in the goal or something. I don't know. I haven't heard it. And, and I've, you know, watch sports and stuff, all different sports, uh, for as long as I can remember. Now, if it happens, please share it with me. I'm not saying that it's never happened. I just highly doubt it. You have to be more aggressive and kids who are aggressive coaches usually allow them more latitude when they make mistakes. So we need to work on showing them how to be successful. So they're not timid. Okay. And a lot of times these are kids who are just now starting who don't understand the speed and aggressiveness of the game. Okay. All right. Next thing I'm going to talk about is uh, what I call leading, leading a player with a pass. All right. Now, what does that mean? What do you mean leading? What are you talking about? Leading man, leading woman in a movie? No, what I'm saying is sometimes when you, uh, when you, when there are turnovers, it's because the, you know, the passer will pass the ball to the player where they were or where they were at the time that you're getting ready to pass the ball. If you're in a fast break or if you're, if a player's cutting, you never throw the ball to them. You throw the ball to where they're going. So they're going to meet. Hey, let me ask you, have y'all ever wondered, and, and, and this is just one of those weird topics. It, it does relate. Have you ever wondered why time and time again, when you're coming to a stop sign and another car is coming to a stop sign, you always seem to meet at the same time. You know, like you don't, you rarely will get to a stop sign and then the other car is like half a mile away. It's like y'all are all, bo- all both moving at the same speed and, and stuff and, and, and you and you get there at the same time. You know, it's it's odd. OK. All right. So what does that have to do? It's kind of like leading with the past. You don't throw the pass to them when they're coming. You throw it to them where you're trying to get them to go. Uh, sorry for, for me veering off with that that stop sign thing, but I, I always think about it every time I stop sign. Like, man, did they leave the house at the same time? Did we w- did we pull out of the out of the driveway in the same speed for us to get to this ex- same exact point simultaneously? Uh, yeah, no, nah, I'm, I'm I'm tripping now. But in any case. Uh, you want to always, what I do is I'll put a, um, a cue, whether it's a cone or, or something that the kids can identify. And when that player is going to cut or run, I tell them to throw that, that ball to that precise point. And that's when the player will catch the ball in stride and make, make a shot. So you have to lead them because I've seen tons of turnovers where the ball is going behind the player. Uh, I've seen that the player was led too much. So the pass was way too far ahead for them. So it's an art that you have to kind of work on and you have to work on it knowing the person's speed, knowing the speed that you pass. Okay. 
but uh that it's it's not too hard it's it's simple to do but you have to do it enough to get used to it and understand it but yes it happens mostly when you're passing to a person who's cutting to the basket or if it's kind of a fast break where you're trying to throw the ball ahead and let them go get it okay so that's leading with the pass okay so uh before i get out of here let me get to the bonus content for my patreon people uh, i'm gonna discuss overtime sports what is overtime sports and is it bad for kids okay i'm gonna talk about dealing with double teams or or face guarding you know it, it, if you're the, if you're a top scorer on the team you know a lot of times that's what a defense is going to look at doing so i'm going to cover that and i'm gonna cover a story well not really a story but i'm just going to discuss sunday drivers what is Sunday drivers? <laughs> I can't wait to talk about that because I never knew what it was and I, until it was happening. And I was like, oh, okay, this is what they're talking about. So I'm going to discuss that and, uh, and with, my, with my Patreon. So uh, I'm going to get out of here. And I really hope, you know, that this was an enlightening discussion. There will be a couple of more discussions uh because I've been, you know, gathering information to try to have a solution for stuff. Because I don't want to just put stuff out there without, well, this is how you fix it. Or this is how I think it should be fixed. So I'm gathering that information. And, and uh, maybe not on episode 20, but 21 depends. You know, it'll, it'll we'll, we'll drop that discussion. And hopefully it's informative enough to help help those out there. So with all of that being said, I'm going to end this as I always do. If it was easy, everyone would be doing it. I'm out. Street cred sports, say it with your chest. Yeah, yeah. Go get it from the net. Street cred sports, okay, that's a bet. Yeah.